Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you have joined us as we continue in our summer series, Hopeful. Summer is the perfect time for outdoor activities and experiences that expand our love of God, creation, and each other. Many of us spent part of our summers growing in our faith at Bible camp. Whether you grew up going to Bible camp or not, through our virtual hopeful series, we all have the opportunity to take part in a camp-like experience through worship. Today, parts of our worship will be led by some of our youth and adults who took part in service camp this week in North Minneapolis. While our plans to travel to Appalachia this summer have been changed, the opportunity to serve others is always present. We are grateful for their work this week, rehabbing a home, for working together to make a difference, and that we get the chance to hear about it. Our theme for today is peaceful, and we hear the story of Jesus stilling the storm at sea. When have you experienced storms in your life? When have you experienced the peace of God? Keeping these questions in mind, I invite you to light a candle, to gather your elements for communion, bread and wine or crackers and juice, whatever you have, and to settle into your camp chair or on your couch or wherever you may be. I invite you to take a deep breath in and slowly exhale. As you breathe, remember that even when we aren't together in person, we are the gathered body of Christ, and this time and space is holy. Christ is here. Let us begin. God of all hopefulness, fill the world with peace. From the midst of many storms, we have heard your voice bringing peace. You put a new song in our mouths. Now make us instruments of your peace, O oh God. <laughs> You have done great things for us, and holy is your name. Amen. Thank you for joining me as we talk a little bit about camp. So I'm wondering, you are our delegate for Camp WAPO. How long have you been involved with camp at WAPO? A long time. I think probably the early 1970s. Since then, we're, what, three camps now? Uh, yep. Camp WAPO, two other camps. Yep. Building this new base and uh, the one out in the woods. Oxley, and, uh, yep. And since that time, we have bought Wilderness Canoe Base during the time I was there, okay. which at that time was organized and owned by uh, Plymouth Christian Youth Center. Okay. We built uh, two new buildings since then, Anderson Hall and uh, Crossfire. Since mm -hmm. A lot of things have happened in those years. Absolutely. A, a lot of changes have happened. Yep, camp keeps uh, growing. Mm-hmm. What's special about Camp Wapo to you, Paul? I like when I'm there uh, at different times. It is fun to see that all the kids 
uh, making new friends, mm -hmm. having a great time in the lunchroom, <laughs> getting around. What difference did camp make for you and your family? I think it made quite a difference when they came home from camp and shared their experiences at camp and, and the, the studies they went through and, and different things how they made, made their friends and mm -hmm. had fun, <laughs> a lot of fun and uh, different games and uh, in the waterfront activities and ropes course and yeah. things like yeah. that. Yeah, powerful experiences for your kids. Yes, Here I think all four of them went to camp at one time or another. And Andrea went to uh, Willard's Canoe Base, and I think uh, Betchen Oberdorfer was her leader at that time. Oh, that's, <clears throat> yeah, that's wonderful. Tell me about your experience of camp as an adult. Well, my wife, uh, Carol, and I would go to that. I think we went uh, two or three times, and uh, we'd have some Bible studies there, and they had tours on the bus mm -hmm. out to some of the uh, historic churches in Wisconsin and Minnesota also. Yeah, I didn't, Paul was telling me about um, fall retreats for adults at camp, and I hadn't heard some of those stories, so it's fun to hear about all the ways that camp um, serves people of all ages, and year-round, too. And I believe they have other organizations that come in also at different times of the year. It's a beautiful place, um, and we're so grateful for all of your service as a delegate, um, keeping those connections alive between Camp Wapo and Prince of Peace. So thank you very much um, for all of your experience with that. So Paul and I are going to lead us in our confession and forgiveness today. God of all wonders, you have set us humans under the swirling stars and among the wild winds, hoping that in your love, we will grow deep, sustaining roots. Though we are lost among our schedules and phones and emails and lists, we forget our roots. For the sake of living hopefully, Remind us that your love has no end. We forget to be kind. For the sake of living joyfully, remind us to care for one another. We forget to be compassionate. For the sake of living peacefully, remind us that we are fragile. We forget to protect. For the sake of living faithfully, remind us that your creation is holy. We forget about breathing. For the sake of living powerfully, remind us of your peace. Forgive us, loving God. God of wonders, be with us. We rejoice in your forgiveness. Your love is all we need. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, and thank you for joining me for the children's message this morning. I am here at the beach because lakes and beaches are so much part of summer. I hope you've had a chance to go to the beach or a pool or play in a wading pool in your backyard or maybe run through the sprinkler, which is really fun to do in the summer. The beach reminds me of our story for today, which is about Jesus and the disciples who were on the beach when Jesus says, why don't we take the boat across the lake? I've made a couple boats that will help us to tell our story for today. Jesus had been teaching on the beach all day. And as it was evening, he said to the disciples, let us get on the boat and go across the lake. And that is what they did. Jesus had had a long day and he fell asleep in the back of the boat. And then suddenly a storm came up and the wind and the waves were battering the boat about and the disciples were afraid. And they yelled for Jesus, wake up, wake up, don't you care that we are dying? And Jesus got up and he said, peace, be still. And the wind and the waves stopped. Thanks for joining me for the children's message. And I hope that you have fun at the beach. Now let's listen to the story being read from the Bible by some of the participants in our North Minneapolis service project this week. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and breathed the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I love this story. The wind, the waves, the beach, the boat. It is the perfect summer story. And the drama with the wind coming up and the boat being swamped and Jesus asleep and the disciples afraid that they are perishing. What is not to love about this story and its miraculous ending? The East Coast has been hit hard by storms like that this week. And even while we enjoy perfect weather here in Minnesota, there are storms going on. The chaos in our lives, in our country, in our world, is what the storms in this story are talking about. Whether it is cancer ravaging the body of someone you know and love, or dementia that has stolen their memory so that you feel like you don't even know the person anymore. It might be Parkinson's that makes doing things that you used to do easily so very difficult. I read a story earlier this week about a superintendent in Arizona. He is having to make really tough decisions as are all school administrators and government officials and parents and kids. This spring, they did distance e-learning like everyone else did and continued that in summer school. But three of his teachers were team teaching a summer course and they asked if they could be together in the same room while they were creating their videos for the students. They used all the proper protocols, masking and social distancing and disinfecting surfaces. And yet one of them was diagnosed with COVID-19 and then the two colleagues were and the woman's family was, and she was rushed to the emergency room when she had trouble breathing and was put on a ventilator and later died. 
how could this superintendent possibly say to parents and to teachers and to students that we have these protocols in place? It is safe for you to send your child. And what are your fears that are overwhelming and consuming you these days? Maybe you are a parent worried about whether it is safe to send your child to school, whether you'll have to make arrangements so you can be home for distance learning. Maybe it is the possibility of returning to the office soon instead of working from home and what will that look like and is that safe? Or what kinds of things is it safe to do socially? All of these are fears that consume us, just like the disciples were full of fear during this storm. They were crying out, Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing? Perishing, both immediate survival, but also don't you value us and our lives? Aren't we more important than your taking a nap? I woke up at 4 a.m. on Monday morning of this week and I was nervous. I was nervous about this North Minneapolis service project and what it would look like. I hadn't been out among people like this since early March and I'm sure you probably haven't either or not until just recently. Everybody agreed that our mission trip to Appalachia should be canceled. The idea of putting students in 15 passenger vans, driving to another part of the country and sleeping in very close proximity to one another and interacting with lots of people did not sound like a good idea. So we needed to cancel it, even though mission trips are such a valuable experience. Then the idea came up that good neighbors, the organization we're working with, might come to us and we could work on rehabbing buildings here in the Twin Cities. I loved the concept, it sounded great. And we're partnering again with St. Luke's in Bloomington as we did last year for the New York trip. When Pastor Rob from St. Luke's called me to say, we have a location, we are going to work on rehabbing a business that has been destroyed on Lake Street. We were both very excited and he told me some of the details. And then I said, the work is outdoors, right? And he said, no. And I seriously wondered if we could even present this to our families to say, would you like to do this? It just sounded like maybe we shouldn't do that. But soon there was another project as well, a home in North Minneapolis and the work would be outside. This sounded more feasible. The way it came about is that the person from Good Neighbors who works in Appalachia actually grew up at St. Luke's in Bloomington and he went on a mission trip to Appalachia and this became his life's calling and his life's work. So he has connections in Minneapolis. And we needed a contractor to help with the work and getting the permits and things like that. And a contractor who had been a previous youth was found. And this contractor knew of a woman who lived in North Minneapolis who was recently widowed who needed help with her house. Because you see, her husband, who died recently of a heart attack in January, had been a contractor and a mentor to this younger contractor. That is how we got connected with Jana in North Minneapolis. Her house was built in 1907 and needed lots of work. Her son had been exposed to COVID, so he couldn't even come over and help her with the yard. And because of physical health issues, she couldn't do these things herself. So the Good Neighbors team, including our group from Prince of Peace, set out to do yard work and landscaping, build new front steps, fix plaster, do painting, um, and put in new windows. Our team's role was the outdoor portion of the work. Each day we would have lunch and devotions and the homeowner would join us and shared much of her story. In 2008, in that financial crisis, she and her husband lost their home 
to foreclosure. They moved to this house, which they rented from her mother-in-law and have subsequently inherited. Her husband worked hard as a contractor, but was always working on other people's homes and never had the opportunity to get to theirs. Then this spring, she discovered that a raccoon had gotten into the attic and chewed through the wiring. She was told that the house was unsafe, that she could not live there unless all the wiring was replaced. Otherwise the house would be condemned. So she spent her entire savings, $20,000 on the wiring, and that has been upgraded. But now she has no money left to do any of the other work. She thanked us profusely, saying that our coming to do this work on her home was a miracle. She had tears welling up in her eyes, and she said that we had inspired her that she has an elderly neighbor who she's known for a long time who cannot do a lot of things for herself. So she is volunteering one day a week to go over and do laundry and clean and get groceries for this neighbor. She said, because that is something that I can do. Whatever I thought of North Minneapolis, this was not it. She talked about the neighborhood as being fairly quiet. All the neighbors know each other and they look in on her and make sure that she is okay. She feels safe walking her dog in the neighborhood and they've had the same mail carrier for years who knows everybody. The neighborhood is a mix of black, white, Hmong and Latino neighbors. She happens to be Caucasian. And as it turns out, she grew up about three quarters of a mile from where I grew up. And she went to the Catholic church and school right across the street from the church where I grew up. She works part-time at a gas station, which is on Highway 96 and Hodgson Road in Shoreview. We learned so much this week. And like with mission trips, when you go far away, you feel like you get more than you're actually giving. The homeowner, Jana, had such a positive attitude and a calmness about her, despite all that has happened to her. It reminds me of how Jesus said, peace, be still. Think about what is it that you are fearful of? How do you react when you are overwhelmed by fear? Why is it that fear consumes us? and seems to crowd out faith. Peace, be still, is something that Jesus didn't just say to the wind and the waves. He was also saying it to the disciples, and he is saying it to us. He is saying, stop. Stop floundering and being so busy. Stop, think, pray, be still, sit, maybe go outside. Have that conversation with God. Tell God about your fears. Focus on what is going on in the moment. We can't stop all of the chaos going on in the world much as we want to, but we can cultivate this sense of calm in chaos that Jesus so wants for us. I would like to end as if we might, if we were worshiping together outdoors at camp. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, and listen to these words from Psalm 4610. I will repeat them several times, pausing in between. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Amen. Several weeks ago, 
Pastor Peter's daily devotion mentioned his time at Bible camp and that a common tradition was a bonfire at the end of the day. When I was in grade school, I went to Bible camp. It was wall camp in Illinois. We also ended each day with the bonfire where we sang songs and we watched skits. We always ended the exact same way. We sang the beautiful hymn, Abide With Me. As we finished the hymn, we then walked back to our cabins to prepare for the night, humming that beautiful song. It gave me such a sense of calm and peace that I remember to this day. I hope that this arrangement of Abide With Me brings you peace.
Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Deb Cordes and I serve on the Prince of Peace Council. You know, I've missed you all and I'll be so glad when we are together. But during this time, I appreciate being get, getting together with you via video conference. At least I feel connected and with you. Thank you. For those who continue to make your regular support of our ministry and how you find us each and every day, whether we're receiving your gifts through the mail, through an electronic medium, we really appreciate it. You are love in action for all that you do for Prince of Peace. You are an inspiration to us and we thank you for that continued gift. If you're not part of Prince of Peace, know that this service and all the other online services that we have are yours as a gift from us. If you would like to know more about us or would like to check out one of the other options for joining us in the video world, please check out our website at Prince of Peace. For those who may be interested in joining us on a more permanent basis and want to know who we are and what we're about, once again, take a look at the website and join us in our mission to share God's love with the world. You can also make a gift, should you be inclined to do so, no requirements, on that same website. So, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this community of faith and for your continuing support of the church. Wherever you are in the world, we know that you share God's love and we share it with you as well. Have a good day. Trusting the God of hope continues to be the source of all that is necessary and good. We pray for the outpouring of God's peace for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Bring peace into our work, God, as we struggle with the challenges and complexities of adapting to new and ever-evolving realities in light of this continuing COVID-19 pandemic. Calm our spirits and make our efforts fruitful. Help us to restore peace to this creation within which you have placed us to be stewards and guardians. Give us the courage to change our destructive ways and open our eyes to the beauty that is all around. Return peace through justice to all your people. Break open the hearts of we who are privileged and fill us with compassion for all who have been oppressed. Help us to stand with those who have been pushed aside, ignored, or dismissed, because if we're looking for you, it's with them that you will be found. May all who suffer this day find peace that encourages them 
to meet the challenges that continue to come, heal the sick, counsel the caregivers, reassure the traumatized, comfort the lonely, and enlighten the decision makers so that all that, that your will may be done. Hear the names of all for whom we pray in our hearts today. Deliver peace to all who mourn. May the saints of every time and place continue to witness to your saving power and inspire us to action in response to the unstoppable love that you offer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus, the one who was, is, and will continue to be the Prince of Peace. Amen. Here in the Christicon Meadow at the foot of the cross, we gather together to share in the Lord's Supper. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered together with his disciples and they shared a meal. During that meal, he took some bread, he gave thanks, and gave it to them to eat, saying, This is my body. Eat this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took a cup of wine, blessed it, and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this and remember me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So, let's eat together. As you share in this meal with one another, take some of the bread. And hear this, this is the body of Christ given for you. And then take the wine and know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Everything is ready. Let's eat. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his peace. Amen. We are grateful for this time together today to hear the word of God, 
to share in the gifts of grace, to pray and to be one with another. We hope this time of worship has been a gift to your day. A few announcements to keep in mind. At 10 o'clock, you're invited to join us for coffee, cookies, and conversation. And at 11 o'clock, you're invited to join us for a short Zoom communion service. Both of those links can be found under the description of this video. Also, you're welcome to print off some coloring sheets that we have for our hopeful summer theme. They've been drawn by our own Michael Stetzler. This week, you have the special opportunity of joining us for a drive-through art show on our hopeful theme. It's at Prince of Peace in the parking lot on Wednesday, August 12th. And Vacation Bible School, a summer tradition, this year will be VBS in a box. More information can be found in the links in your daily email and on our website. Now, receive the blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Filled by the Spirit, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.